Previously on Bite Size, we've looked at numeric coprocessors. Today, we're looking at the apparent successor, Matrix Maths coprocessors. By the time the Pentium arrived, it seemed like there wasn't much more to say about coprocessors, as even the lowliest Pentium had the coprocessor circuitry built in. But then a newer form of the Pentium arrived, the MMX. MMX technology is an enhancement to Intel's CPUs, designed to make the PC faster and more colourful when they're handling multimedia applications. Interactive video, virtual reality and high quality 3D, and also communications applications. The enhancement, and MMX by the way, is purportedly not an acronym because it doesn't officially stand for anything, but it basically means multimedia extensions. Anyway, it's provided by MMX versions of Intel chips, which in addition to their regular features, respond to 57 instructions that are oriented to highly parallel operations with multimedia and communications data types. Multimedia apps do lots of computation, lots of things in parallel, and tend to use small integer data types. The 57 new processor code instructions that constitute MMX technology were designed to help speed up the core algorithms and thus improve overall application performance. Having these MMX instructions in a Pentium chip makes it easier to build code to do multimedia things, like simultaneous real-time activities. An example would be multiple channels of audio, near TV quality video or animation, and internet communication all running in the same application. Now, these 57 instructions use a technique known as SIMD, Single Instruction Multiple Data, which means that a single instruction operates on multiple pieces of data in parallel. For example, with a single MMX instruction, up to 8 integer pairs can be added together in parallel. This parallel operation uses 64-bit registers. Depending on the operation, these are defined as 8 8-bit bytes, 4 16-bit words, 2 32-bit double words, or 1 64-bit quad word. MMX technology was designed to simplify writing things but must manipulate matrix-orientated data. Applications like video capture programs, graphical manipulation programs like PaintShop Pro, graphical oriented games, 2D and to a lesser extent 3D graphics, speech recognition and data compression. The MMX represents a very specific policy goal for Intel. Let the system processor do all the computing. Now, years ago, Intel sought to build terrific video capture boards around special purpose chips designed to do one and only one thing. Convert an analog video signal into a digital signal quickly. But realising that they'd rather sell 100 million Pentium 2 chips a year than sell 50 million Pentium 2 chips, 5 million video capture chips, 10 million sound chips, etc., they started encouraging multimedia vendors to build cheaper boards that offload more and more of their work onto the main processor. The result is, of course, that people want faster and faster processors. The MMX's 57 commands were added to the Pentium to make it easier for the processor to get those jobs done. The first MMX compatible CPU was called the MMX. It was a modified Pentium, but the Pentium chip didn't have enough room to be able to handle both the floating point numeric coprocessor support as well as the Matrix MMX support at the same time. So, when you were running MMX specific software on an MMX, the floating point support is disabled. That's too bad because whenever you're doing matrix specific calculations, you're likely to be also doing complex maths, logs, signs, exponentials. The job still gets done, but without the floating point coprocessor, complex maths takes longer to do. Thus, the MMX gets faster on matrix operations, but gets slower on floating point. Is it a good trade-off? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But in many cases, it just plain doesn't matter. As MMX circuitry is only enabled when you're running MMX aware software, there just wasn't that much of it. The next MMXer was the Pentium 2. The Pentium 2 is just a Pentium Pro with MMX circuits added. The good news is that the Pentium 2 has the power to simultaneously run both the MMX commands and the floating point command. Very cool. Clearly Intel regretted releasing a chip that made software choose between Matrix and Floating Point, leading some to wonder if the correct name of the Pentium 2 chip should really have been the Repentium chip.
In any case, the Pentium 2 was soon joined by a lower priced model, the Celeron, and a higher priced model, the Xeon. Both these cousins, so close in fact, that they both had MMX circuitry from the go. And it remains with us to this very day.